how can we fairly divide up the profits or costs of an endeavor when everybody hasn't contributed equally. For example, suppose three friends are at a party and they're gonna take a taxi to drive home. Along the road, however, not all houses are at the same spot. And then just to make the math easy, I'm gonna assume that the taxi meter is $6 when they get to the first house, double that $12 when they get to the second house and $30 when they get to the third house. So. How should these three people divide up this $30 bill? What would be a fair proportion for each of the three players to pay? To help me visualize it, I'm gonna put these prices on a chart. And I'm gonna imagine I have three people. How about John Nash, the founder of Game Theory and a Nobel Prize winner, Lloyd Shapley, the founder of this particular branch of Game Theory we're talking about in this video, and a Nobel Prize winner, and uh, me, Trevor Bazet, somebody who makes math videos, but has won the Nobel for YouTube math videos, the three blue, one brown, golden plushie. Kind of the same thing. So the real question is, how should Nash, Shapley, and Bazit divide up this $30 bill? And let me show you some bad answers first. Like, one way to do this would be to divide it up in the following way. John Nash is going to pay for the section to their house $6. Then Shapley is going to pay the remaining $6 to their house, that will take it up to $12 total. And then I will pay the remaining $18 to get me all the way up to $30. And this is a way to divide up the cost. It adds up to $30, which is going to be the taxi bill, so that's good. But John Nash here, he's not all that happy because he could have just gone off by himself and paid $6. Why is all of the benefit of him joining this coalition and him deciding to be part of the shared benefit going to the other two people? In this scenario, well, it's my video, I've made me be the one who wins the most. Yes, I have to pay $18, but that is way less than the $30 I would have had to pay on my own. In contrast, this is another extreme scenario where Shapley pays their entire original amount of $12, and then there's a ton of benefit going to Nash, who pays none, and then that same $18 to me. And then the final extreme is the really bad one for me, where I pay the full $30 and the other two don't pay anything. And this doesn't really cost me anything. I mean, I was gonna pay $30 if I went by myself, but I am not sharing in the benefits of forming this coalition where we work together and divide the sort of benefit of working together evenly amongst us. So the actual best way to do it is somewhere in the middle here, where each person is paying less than they would have paid otherwise, and this is an incentive to try and make this coalition happen. But what exactly could these numbers be? Is there a unique best answer? Is there multiple best answers? What exactly is going on? Now, I want to return to those Ed's cases, but I want to return to them thinking about now there is an order to how you get in the taxi. Let's imagine, for example, that the first person is John Nash, they go to the taxi stand, they pay for their taxi, they've paid their $6, and then they see their friend come by. In this scenario, the friend's like, okay, well, hop in, but I've already paid the $6 to get it up to $12 for your house. You have to pay that additional $6. There's an order in how they're coming. And then they both are in the taxi, and finally I show up, and they're like, okay, fine, you hop in as well. We've already paid $12. You add 18, that'll take you all the way to your house. And what these three numbers here, the 6, 6, and 18, refer to are called the marginal contribution. It's the amount that you pay above the predecessors who came before you. And you can go to any of these ones and change the order up, you know, Shapley going first and then John and then uh, myself, and you get different marginal contributions depending on the order of who arrives and pays first. And you can sort of imagine that with three people, there's three factorial different ways in which people could come first, second, and third. And here is the big idea of this video. I am going to take the average of the marginal contributions over every possible way that I could permute the order. And that is the value that I'm going to pay. That is, if you impose an ordering, then people pay their marginal contributions. And if I take the average over all of the orderings, that I'm going to have to argue is going to be the best possible way to fairly divide this. Okay, so what exactly do I mean by this? Well, 
The general way we describe these types of cooperative games is through something called a characteristic function. What a characteristic function does is it inputs a subset of the players who have decided to work together and form a coalition and outputs a cost, it outputs a value of it. So we had seen, for example, if all three of us are involved, then the cost of Nash and Shapley and Bazit is the full $30. But if you don't include me and just have Nash and Shapley, it would only be $12. This is the so-called characteristic function. And the reason I write it as two to the n to the real numbers is that there's two to the n possible coalitions of n people, two to the n possible subsets. Each of the people is either in the coalition or not in the coalition, hence the two to the power of n. To make this a little bit faster, I'll just abbreviate the long names to just n, s, n, b. And now I want to address the idea of the marginal contribution that we've been talking about. What's a marginal contribution? Well, a marginal contribution is the difference between when you include a player and when you don't. So in this case, this is the marginal contribution of player B joining the coalition. It's the difference in that cost function from when they are included and when they're not included. And note, a marginal contribution depends on what coalition you're starting with. So this one says I'm starting with Nash and Shapley working together and should I add in Bazet? This is a different marginal contribution. This is the one that starts with just Nash starting by themselves. And now the marginal contribution of adding in me goes from all the way to $30 from $6. It's a marginal contribution of 24. Okay, so now let me write down the formula that's going to be like an average of these marginal contributions. This is the formula for the Shapley value. It's got a few different elements into it, but let's break it down. This value is the amount that the ith player is going to play. So how much does Nash have to play, how much does Shapley have to pay, and how much does Bazit have to play? Out the front here we have this n factorial, and basically there's n factorial ways that you could rearrange n players. So I want to do an average over all the ways I could rearrange people, and there's n factorial of them, so my average formula has a 1 over the total number, which is n factorial. And then I'm doing a summation over every possible way that I could order it. Everywhere we could choose who's coming first, who's coming second, and who's coming third. And then what am I summing? I'm summing up all these marginal contributions. And I use the symbol P here to list all of the predecessors to a particular ith player. And so basically the way this reads is if you have a coalition formed, a group of predecessors, what is the marginal contribution of now adding in that ith player? So you have a larger set, you have the original coalition union now this ith player. And the marginal contribution of adding that ith player, that is what we're going to be summing up in our average. Oh, okay, so, so this is a bit of a technical formula, but let me show you how to compute it out really easy with just a table of values. I'm going to make a table of all the possible marginal contributions. Along the top, I've put different ways I can order who comes first, who comes second, and who comes third. So for example, along that first column, I'm asserting that Nash comes first, and Shapley comes second, and Bazet comes third. Then in a column, what I'm going to do is fill in the marginal contribution for each of the three players. So in this first column where Nash comes first, they just get into the taxi, they pay the $6 they have to do to get to their house. Then Shapley comes second, $6 already been paid to get up to 12, they have to pay an additional six. And then I come, 12's already been paid, I need to get to 30, I have to pay the value of 18. But in the second column, the order changes around. Now Shapley arrives first, this person needs to pay $12, they showed up first. Then Nash, which is the shortest one, they don't pay anything because the 12's already paid, they're only going to the first house. And then finally, I arrive and I have to pay the remaining 18. The next column goes Nash, and then Bazet, and then Shapley, and you can go all the way through this chart filling out the marginal contributions. And then the formula just says, take the average along a row. It says, for each player, add up the marginal contributions, and then divide out by six the number of permutations. So the Shapley value for Nash is one-sixth, and then you just add up the row. Six plus zero plus six plus zero plus zero plus zero, 12 over 6 is 2. They should pay $2 of this $30 bill. Similarly for Shapley, the, the 1 over n factorial, the 1 over 6 is always at the front. But now it's 6 plus 12 plus 0 plus 12 plus 0 plus 0. This is $5 that they should pay to the total bill. And doing the same thing for me, it's much larger values, but 
it adds up to $23. So going back to our visualization, we weren't sure, like, what number should I do? How, how big should I draw these bars? But according to Shapley value, it should be 2, 5, and 23. Those should be the three values. Okay, so now you might think, well, how do you know that averaging the marginal contributions is the best way to do this? How do you know that that's the only way to do this? So let's step back a bit and I want to show you how you can take an axiomatic approach to this kind of problem solving. And basically the idea is each of these should be kind of obvious so that we all just agree like yes, something is not fair if it doesn't have one of these properties. It certainly has to have these four properties. So what are they? Okay, the first one, the fancy notation is written this way that the sum of all of the values is just the cost for everyone. And this is an efficiency claim. If you add up how much everyone pays and you got more than $30, that would be stupid because the taxi bill is $30. If you ever added it up and got less than $30, you wouldn't be paying the taxi the $30 they needed. So the sum of what everybody pays has to be everything. Obviously, you need this efficiency claim, otherwise the whole thing falls apart. Okay, so it's an axiom. Hopefully I've convinced you it's a very reasonable one. Okay, what about symmetry? Well, symmetry is the idea that if two people are indistinguishable, then they should pay the same amount, which also seems kind of obvious. And, and more specifically what I mean is if you take a specific subset S already of players, and now the debate is, do I add you or do I add me? And let's just say that it's always the same. Like, the cost of taking a coalition and adding you, or in the coalition and cost of adding me is the same. Like, you and I are kind of indistinguishable. Then the amount that you and I get should be the same as well. If we both add the same thing to every possible coalition, we're indistinguishable and our values should be the same. This is a symmetry axiom, and, and I hope you agree. Yeah, if you didn't have this, it clearly wouldn't be unfair. If, if two people were contributing the same amount but got different out of it, that wouldn't be fair at all. The third one's called null player. It says, well, what about somebody who doesn't contribute anything? <laughs> they should pay zero. Like, let's imagine somebody whose house is right beside the stop and they could just step one foot and get there and not cost anything. More formally, this would be a scenario where whatever coalition you have, if you add in the ith person, you just get the same cost you previously had without them. If this person is a null player in the sense that they never increase the cost, then, well, they shouldn't have to pay anything. Again, I, I hope you think that's very fair. And then the final one is slightly more technical, it's linearity. The argument goes something like this. Imagine you had a cost function that was the sum of two other ones, like Maybe there were two stages in the journey, two different games being played. Well then just solve each stage individually and add them up. That the value you get should be the value from the first stage plus the value from the second stage if the cost is the cost from the first stage plus the cost from the second stage. Regardless, four axioms that I'm not going to prove them to you, I just hope that you agree that they are reasonable ideas that should be part of any attempt to fairly divide the values. Why am I saying this? Because we have an incredible theorem. It says that the Shapley value that I showed you is the unique way to divide up the value such that those four fairness axioms are solved. If you try to do it any other way, then one of the axioms is going to be violated and you're going to say, well, clearly that's unfair. Whichever axiom is violated is violated. We need to have those to be fair. So the Shapley value isn't just something that's sort of made up and nice and pleasing. It's the unique way to fairly divide it according to those four notions of a fair division. I want to show you one more way to think about the same Shapley value. Let's imagine our scenario with the three people going to the three houses. Well, the three people take different routes. The first person just goes to the first house, the second person goes all the way to the second, and the third all the way to the third. So focus on that first segment. In a sense, the cost of this first segment is $6. That's what the meter's gonna read at the end of it. But on that first segment, there's three people who are involved. And so one way to think about this $6 is you're dividing its cost up three ways, one to each of the three players. That $2 the first person plays, that's where that $2 is coming from. In the second segment here, well, now there's two players who are going along, and the second segment costs a further six dollars. 
We're going all the way to $12 on the middle, but the first six already being divided. Now we're going to the second segment, a second six, dividing between two people is $3 and $3. And this is indeed why the Shapley value for the second player is $5. It's the $2 from the first segment and then the $3 from the second segment. That adds up to five. And then player three is gonna be on their own for the remaining $18. There's only one of them. 18 divided by one is $18. If you add up all the pink, you get 18 plus 3 plus 2 is the $23 that we calculated. And so presented this way, the Shapley value is hopefully a very intuitive answer that seems quite reasonable as well. To learn more cool mathematics, I highly recommend the sponsor of today's video, which is Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a highly interactive online learning platform for math, science, computer science. They have thousands of lessons available. but I was having fun with one of their newer ones recently, which was an introduction to large language models, LLMs. Because how do they actually work behind the scenes? Brilliant's lessons unpack core ideas like coherence and tokenization in a way that lets anyone build up their understanding in layers of increasing complexity so that you don't feel left behind. The lessons are both really visually oriented and are also very interactive so that you're actively engaged in the learning process. I'm a big believer in student-centered active learning, and that's why I'm so proud to be sponsored by Brilliant. So to check out everything that Brilliant has for free for a full 30 days, go to brilliant.org slash Trevor Bazzett or the link is down in the description. And the first 200 of you to sign up are gonna get an additional 20% off an annual premium subscription. With that said and done, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and we'll do some more math in the next video.